Hi, uh, my name is Steven from Data Video, and I'm here with Justin. Hi. Uh, we're um, basically welcoming you to our first uh, Tech Corner video. Um, and the goal for our videos, or, or these little episodes that we have, is to answer uh, specific technical questions you might have about some of the Data Video products that we have, or if there's specific streaming topics, or, or different things here and there that, are, that come up in tech support. Uh, we want to address those with you. Um, so, um, if you, you know, are obviously you're following us on Facebook, so you feel free to comment or add any questions that you might have as as we kind of go over our topic. Um, so today's topic specifically is on streaming. Um, you know, everybody talks about streaming and and the buzzword with streaming, and and you know, they know that uh, you can you can do this to to get your message out there on the internet. But what a lot of people don't talk about is what are the things that you need to actually start a stream? Like, um, you know, what type of devices? Are there certain pitfalls that you should be, you know, should keep in mind? And um, we kind of wanted to go over that with you today to kind of help our customers, especially novice users. Uh, maybe, you know, you're a small church and you want to get your message out there and um, you don't know how to start or how to begin. Um, and a lot of people talk about, you know, okay, buy this, buy that, but you might not know, okay, once you buy those, those pieces, what you actually should have been aware of beforehand. So we kind of want to address that with you today, and uh, Justin and I will both be talking about specific topics for that. So today I think we should start with our, our intro slide um, showing what a basic stream is. Uh, so... A basic stream is usually, you know, a video source or a camera source, and then you're gonna you're gonna connect that obviously to your internet connection. Um, you're gonna use either you know a hardware encoder or some other type of uh, either software encoding um, to get your stream to what we call a CDN, which Justin will elaborate on that in a little bit. Um, but typical free CDNs, at least that are that are really really popular right now, are obviously Facebook and YouTube. Um, and there are a number of other paid ones as well. So um, at this point, I want to go ahead and cut over to, uh, to Justin, and we'll kind of talk about um, what is needed to do a stream. So, so Justin, what, what, what would you need to get started with, a, with a, you know, a video stream? Okay, yeah, so you're definitely going to want an Internet connection, and you're going to want to have a uh, high upload speed. So uh, typically... Um, when you go to your internet service provider, they're probably going to sell you on a uh, high or really fast download speed, but your upload speed is generally going to be a fraction of that. So uh, one of the best ways to determine your upload speed is to uh, check with your provider and see what the plan affords, and then also measure it using a tool like Speedtest, uh, which is available via app or a website. Um, first, it's going to go and uh, get your download speed, but that's not the important metric. What we're looking for is the second test, which is going to be your upload speed. It's in megabits, millions of bits. And uh, once you have that value, you basically want to encode your video at a bit rate that is less than your, up than your typical upload speed. So we have 16 up here at the office on our streaming network. And um, generally, you want that that value to be two and a half times what your bitrate is. For Facebook Live, they recommend a four megabit stream. And so in that case, you're gonna want at least 10 up um, to cover any dips because it's not a constant uh, upload. Okay, so basically, so you're, you're, you're determining what your upload speed is, which is a, is a key component to the streaming. Um, the other thing that, that you want to account for is, are you streaming this internet connection that you have, let's say at your church or your, your facility, um, with other users? Are you, uh, you know, do you have a number of other users sharing this connection? And, and what happens when you go to stream and, and everybody's pulling down different videos or they're using the, the internet actively? Uh, in most cases, what will happen is it will impact that stream in a negative way. Um, you'll basically get a, a stream drop or you'll get uh, you know, stuttering or buffering, um, problems like that that will ensue with, with live streaming. So, uh, so how would you manage that, for example, Justin, on, 
a router? I mean, is there a way to mitigate the effects of you know people sharing their connection um, actively in a network? Okay, yeah. So with the router device, um, that's usually what is either integrated into your cable modem if you're using cable internet, or um, it'd be a separate box that you either get from your service provider or purchase separately. Um, you also want the login information for that device and keep the keep it handy. It's generally going to have a different password than your Wi-Fi password. Once you log into that router, you have access to all the different options and settings. It can get pretty complicated pretty fast. But the nicest, the nice thing about newer routers is they have uh, features that you might either, either see uh, it be called media prioritization or uh, QoS, quality of service. And uh, uh, I'll have Stephen explain quality of service in more detail in a moment. But basically what these do is allow you to set aside space so that the router works on that bandwidth first and gives it full priority over uh, tasks like browsing Facebook, for instance. Yeah, so that, that's exactly what it does. Basically, quality of service basically sets, uh, it basically reserves a spot for your device. So for in this case, it, let's say we're talking about our NVS25 encoder. Let's say we were going to use that encoder. Um, what would happen is this has, <laughs> thank you, Justin, it has, it has an IP address that will get assigned by the router. And then in your router, you can actually go in and set um, basically like an address reservation for that box. And then you can set up the quality of service. So quality of service on the router means that what will happen is, as Justin said, it, it'll, it'll reserve priority traffic uh, from, the, from the encoder through the router so that uh, when you're actively streaming, this device gets priority. So, so the router says, OK, NVS25 resides on this IP address, so we're going to go ahead and prioritize any traffic that's coming in and out uh, for this box. So basically, it'll slow down other users. Um, if the internet connection gets a little bit uh, you know, constrained, um, but it'll still maintain your stream as best that it can, you know, given the circumstances of, of what your connection speed is like. So um, that's typically what, um, what quality of service would be. So that's a good start. A lot of people overlook that or don't, are not aware of it. Um, so that'll help maintain your, your stream on your network. Um, so that's really your, your internet connection. And I apologize if it looks like I'm looking down, but I'm kind of reviewing uh, notes and seeing if there's any comments from, from our, our, our users with a light Facebook stream. So, um, so basically, uh, we talked about your network. So now, what do you actually, we kind of touched on encoders, but uh, Justin, what do you really need to get started with a stream? So you're going to need your production setup. And you're going to basically, uh, if you have multiple cameras and a video switcher, you're going to take the program out from that switcher, uh, be it via SDI or HDMI, and uh, send it to the input on a hardware video encoder. Um, also, some cameras will support streaming uh, right out of the camera itself with a built-in encoder. So all you need is a network cable, and you're able to pull the stream from the camera and then send it to the streaming service. Now, um, with uh, this setup here, we have um, SDI being fed out of the switcher and into our uh, MVS25 encoder. And this single channel encoder will uh, convert the raw video um, and then uh, push it to <laughs> and then push it to uh, the streaming service uh, of your choice, which in our case is uh, Facebook Live. So um, with that, you're just uh, you're doing all the conversion in this box here to uh, H.264 um, with your raw, uncompressed video uh, source signal. So, so why is that important, Justin? For example, an encoder, a, lo a lot of people might not understand that, OK, you're, you're sending your, li your live video. Why can't I just send my live video as is? Why does it have to go through an encoder to get streamed? So yeah, basically, because raw video is so much data, you wouldn't be generally just uploading that as is. It would need to go through a conversion process to throw out a lot of video information, but still have a clean HD image that you can uh, transmit over the web. And uh, one of the nice things about that too is that um, you know uh, Facebook Live works in 720p. 
um, you know, for a lot of viewers um, on smaller screens, be it with uh, tablets or phones, um, you know, that's a sufficient HD resolution and also uh, reduces your bandwidth requirements. So it does give um, a lot of users, say on a eight or 10 meg upload speed, um, you know, a chance to do HD streaming and reach their audience. Okay, that's, that's great. So, and then as far as um, we talked about an encoder, you, you typically video sources are cameras. Um, they could be a switcher, they could be a playback device. Um, any content that you actually want to push through the encoder, it really doesn't matter. The encoder is basically just seeing the video signal and it recompresses it and sends it to your, your CDN. So, um, why don't we kind of touch on, I mean, we did kind of mention Facebook, but um, there are different content delivery networks. Um, you know, why is a CDN important? So a CDN is one of the easiest ways to reach a larger audience. Um, basically, if you have 100 viewers and you're hosting the stream yourself on your network, you would need to get that bandwidth to send the stream to each individual user. Um, and for, uh, and for most internet connections, um, it's just not feasible. So basically the CDN is a distribution point for your stream. And that allows you to have a much larger audience as well as additional uh, tools and features to interact with your audience. Like for instance, you can comment um, to us live and we can answer your questions on this live stream. Um, as well as um, you know some CDNs have features that are more tailored to your application and market. Um, two of the most popular free CDNs right now are uh, Facebook Live, which we're using right now, as well as YouTube Live. But uh, there's additional uh, free and paid options out there, um, depending on what your needs are for your broadcast. Okay, so that 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 would be a good a good start. Um, so, for example, if if back to the NVS25, obviously this is just an example because this is uh, the simplest way for us to show it. But uh, once you've gotten started and you've got your CDN, or, or let's say, for example, you're going to stream to Facebook like we're doing right now, um, typically, what is the process? I mean, you've got your internet connection, your box is connected to your network, uh, you've got your video source plugged into it, and you're ready to go. Um, what type of information typically would you enter in your um, encoder? So maybe we can show you, you know, uh, an example of, of the way the 25 looks uh, when you go onto the web. So, yeah, I would say one of the most important settings um, that's going to determine the quality of your stream is your bit rate. So um, with uh, that drop down menu, you see a range of numbers. And um, for what we're doing, we're uh, broadcasting to Facebook Live at uh, 720p. So um, you're going to want a bit rate between 2,500 kilobits a second, so 2.5 megabit, um, to 4 megabit. Um, if, if you have uh, other CDN support higher frame rate content, so say if you want to stream sports in 60 frames, you probably want to add a megabit on top of that. And um, if you're going to go up to uh, 1080p resolution, I would say another megabit on top of those values. So it would be, say, between you know, 3.5 to 5 megabit for 1080p 30. But if you're going to go full HD 1080p 60, you're going to need upwards of 6 megabit. Um, and then remember that 2.5 rule that we um, sort of mentioned earlier as a guideline, where if you are going to do 1080p 60, um, you're going to want more than 6 megabit. You're going to want 15 megabit um, upload speed from your internet provider. And um, there has been a, I say in recent years, um, depending on your geographic area, um, there has been an increase in standard upload speeds with uh, residential and uh, some business plans. Um, but yeah, if you're not sure, just check with your ISP or run uh, the speed tests that we showed uh, earlier in this live video. Yeah, so, so that's basically your, your data rate. Um, what are some of the other things that, that uh, most of our customers will ask, like as far as like, okay, GOP size, you know, what's, you know, what's a GOP size? Maybe we don't want to get into a lot of detail, but we can at least kind of give them a rough, uh, a rough uh, point of view of, of how to set up your GOP size. What would that be for, for streaming? So 
Well, when it's with a CDN, one of the best things you can do is you go to their support page and see what their guidelines are for streaming with them. Um, if you go to multiple CDN support pages, you might start to see some similarities, but you know, recommendations may vary based on the technology that the provider uses. Uh, GOP size, I could go all day on, but I'm going to keep it simple. <laughs> um, it's basically a group of pictures, and um, it put, what it means is, is that this would be a keyframe at a set interval. And um, if you're starting out, what you need to know is you want your GOP size to be uh, double what your frame rate is. So in our case, if we're going to be uh, streaming at um, 30 frames a second, you're going to want a GOP size of 60. And if you double the frame rate, then you want 120, permitting your encoder supports that. And um, from there, there's uh, two additional uh, settings. And some encoders may combine these two into the same um, drop-down menu. But it's your H.264 level and profile. So um, you'll have a selection of baseline, main, and high profile. Um, for HD streaming, we recommend main or high profile. Um, and basically, it just adds uh, more uh, enhancements and tweakability to the encode stream for uh, higher resolutions and frame rates. And then also, uh, which is also tied uh, in part to the H.264 level, um, in which case you're going to want, um, say for a 720p30, you could do main profile level 3.1. Um, for 1080p, you could do high profile 4.1, and uh, that would give you uh, an efficient, uh, high, high quality encode. All right, so this is kind of a basic overview of the, of the interface that you're seeing now uh, on the encoder, but this is typical with a lot of encoders. Um, one of the things that I want to show you is, for example, if you were going to set up a live um, stream, let's see if I can pull this up here. course it's not coming up so anyways I'll just kind of go over <laughs> um, while this loads um, typically you're gonna have to enter your 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 stream URL so basically if Facebook is giving you a, a stream URL uh, you'll enter this in your into your RTMP stream field and you'll also enter your key information uh, so I have it up on, on my oh, okay perfect so yeah, you can see here in the uh, MVS25, it would be uh, RTMP publish. And um, under the RTMP publish section, there are uh, four fields that you can enter information into. But uh, typically, the only two you're going to use is your RTMP URL and RTMP stream. Um, one uh, common issue I come across in support is a, a misconception that RTMP username and password need to be used. And often, with Facebook Live and YouTube Live, uh, the users will enter their Facebook or YouTube username and password login. But that information is not necessary and may confuse the encoder. So really all you need is <clears throat> the RTMP URL provided by uh, YouTube, Facebook, or your CDN, as well as the uh, stream key. Um, in this example, uh, we're using uh, information from our uh, DVS 200 stream server software, which uh, we'll probably devote a full episode to in the future. But um, basically, when you're getting ready to set up your stream, uh, Facebook or YouTube will have a page where you're basically uh, given those two fields of information, and then you input them into uh, the uh, interface and then hit apply. So um, from there, uh, you may also encounter that some services will combine the RTMP URL and stream key uh, in a single field. Um, so basically, in that situation, uh, everything after the last forward slash in that string is the stream key. So you can then separate it. Some encoders may also have you put them in on the same line. But with the MVS25, they're separated. All right, great. So, so we're talking about basically how you how you would enter that information into your encoder. Um, and there's, let's see if there was any other specific topics that uh, we wanted to kind of talk about uh, with you. Um, 
So today we kind of covered uh, internet connection, whether you, you, know, you have sufficient bandwidth, um, just to kind of summarize uh, a streaming device that you might need, a uh, video source, and then a CDN. Um, for this episode, this first one, we wanted to kind of keep it very basic. Um, so in the future, you know, if you have uh, suggestions for future topics, we'd be glad to hear from you as far as, uh, you know, if there's specific things that you want to know about um, related to data video products, um, we'd be glad to help you out. Um, so we're going to try to do these uh, periodically. I, I don't want to say like weekly because that might be a little ambitious, <laughs> but um, we want to just kind of touch on these topics and kind of help our customers out um, with these Tech Corner episodes. So if there's specific questions that uh, you have in the future, just uh, let us know. Um, we do have it up on the screen of how to contact us. Um, so thank you for joining us. And uh, remember to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Thank you very much. There was a question. Crap. I can't, I can.